Hello Anchor fans, it's Steve with SV Panopay. As you can see, I'm back out on the water with a new anchor. This is a Viking number no. 7. You can see that it closely resembles a Mantis anchor. I did get a chance to photograph the Viking right next to an almost identically sized Mantis. However, I'll mention a few differences. First of all, in this, what I call the setting position, the Mantis anchor has a much heavier tip weight. About half the weight of the 13-pound Mantis is on the tip right now. How, whereas the Viking Anchor has only about 30% of its 12 pounds of weight on the tip. Part of the reason for that is you can see here that the Mantis Anchor is tipped farther toward the, it, the tip. Also, the fluke material of the Viking is a bit thinner, and I think that also explains why it weighs one pound less than the Mantis. Note the Viking has a larger roll bar and that the shank is attached at a point much further back on the fluke. A result of that shank attachment point difference is that the chain attach point is at a completely different spot geometrically with respect to the fluke. Also note that the mantis's shank flange and bolts are just mounted on the top surface of the fluke, whereas the viking, it has the shank passed through a slot with its shank plate on the underside with round-headed bolts pointing downward. It just makes for a cleaner, less obstructed interface between the shank and the fluke. Okay, let's get down to business and see how this anchor performs in the water. I am in my standard sandy mud bottom. We are in 26 feet of water. We're using 3.5 to 1 scope on a mixed road of 12 feet of chain and the balanced 3 strand nylon. That was the initial set with the boat just sort of idling back. Now I've got 190 pounds of force. Boat's now passing overhead at 3.5 knots. This simulates a rather extreme wind or current reversal. Here's the first reset, anchor flipped up over backwards, and unfortunately it snagged the camera tether. After a few lurches though, it did engage and stop the boat. Increase the power to 190 pounds. And the anchor releases. Not sure if that was that release was due to the tether being caught under the fluke. So if, if that's the case, let's give that first that first reset a pass. Here's the tether is still fouled. Here's a third reset. Now I think the camera tether has sorted itself out, so let's give these next resets a little more credibility. Yeah, it's holding 190 pounds and little if any movement now. Fourth reset. Bit of a drag. But once it connects, boy, it really stops the boat quickly. Got 190 pounds of pull. It has taken a bit for this anchor to engage, but once it does, it it seems to hook up pretty good. So at this point in that 13 pound mantis anchor test, the mantis was becoming fouled to the point where it really would no longer engage the bottom at all at this same scope. 
The Viking is engaged, but it does still creep along a bit with 190 pounds of pull. It's very consistent. It's kind of doing the same thing every time. And same story on the ninth and final reset. So at, at this scape, scope, 3.5 to 1, and this seabed, I'm, I'm willing to say the Viking is superior to the Mantis. Now let's try it at 5 to 1, same bottom. Both the Viking and the Mantis both dis both free fall the same in that they kind of fly up over the road. So textbook initial set. Pull on it with the same 190 pounds every time. That's brilliant. Anchor released and just set immediately. And I'm not really seeing much motion either. There we fouled the camera tether. What's good about this is we can really see exactly the motion or not with respect to the power. I don't think the fouled tether is affecting the setting of the anchor at all. It just means we can't see it. Same 190 pounds of pull. And there's some turbidity and some current moving water around. But you study this, I think you're going to find that this anchor is not moving much. There's a little longer drag. And right there, it stopped. There we get a peek at the bottom. It's it's just not moving. It's great. Uh, that's far better than the Mantis. The Mantis at this same scope was engaging nicely, but still just kept moving along with this same pull. Here's the ninth and final reset. I'm willing to conclude here that the Viking is better uh, than the Mantis at five to one scope, but also I, th I think the Mantis, because of that heavier tip weight, it's just a theory, but I think with that heavier tip, I think it might set faster. But once set, I think the Viking, Viking digs deeper and harder. 
And here we can see that the mud attachment is a little different than the mantis. On the Viking, the mud is closer to the tip, and back at the back of the fluke, there is virtually no mud attached. It's kind of counterintuitive, but I'm finding that mud on the tip really doesn't seem to matter. Okay, you've got the anchor all cleaned off again, and it's time for my so-called deep set test. Uh, we're still in the sandy mud bottom, and it's at five to one scope. And the, in this test, I don't do any back and forth resetting. This is just a straight line pull. Here I'm just idling back for the initial set. First power increase is 190 pounds. I won't edit out any of this uh, these longer segments because you want to know if your anchor is creeping along under a high steady load. But so far, this anchor doesn't do a lot of creeping. It's sticking in good. Here's the next power increase. It's at 380 pounds. Anchor inches forward a bit. A little bit more of the hoop disappears. It was at this point in the Mantis deep set test, at the same, same scope, same seabed, uh, the Mantis released completely and then it really didn't want to reset at all. It would have been fouled and that was kind of all it had in it. The Viking now seems to have stopped moving and now we've increased power up to 560 pounds. And the anchor releases. But noteworthy is that when the anchor re-engages, it actually does re-engage and develops very significant holding power. It's virtually the same as the first time around. So again, I'll conclude that this anchor doesn't seem to have a fouling issue. The performance just stays the same. I can think of four possible reasons that this anchor doesn't foul as much. Uh, maybe it's the different geometry, could be the holes in the fluke, it could be the lack of hardware at that fluke to shank interface, and lastly, the that interface does occur at a whole different spot. It's farther back on the fluke, and maybe that that, maybe that has an effect. So whatever the reason, for this seabed, I conclude that the Viking anchor has significantly greater holding power than the Mantis. Hey Emma, this anchor testing is a lot of work. What do you say we go get pizza? Oh yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. See any rocks up there? Um. We're okay on the rocks. Okay, pizza time. Mission accomplished. Yay! Okay, Viking 7, sand and gravel, 5 to 1 scope. Okay, after that delicious lunch, we moved over to my sand and gravel site. Uh, fortunately, this anchor has landed just perfectly, not on a leaf of seaweed. And I say that because there's a lot more seaweed than normal. It's midsummer, and I don't know if it's the change of season or some other factor, but there is more 
more weed here than normal. So the initial set was fine, and the reset started off okay, but then I added a little bit more power, the anchor started to drag, and it immediately collected a massive ball of weed. I drug the anchor back and forth a few times, and it, it wouldn't develop any holding power, so I, I won't show you that. Uh, here's the result. There's something on this anchor that's very heavy. What is it? Oh my gosh! Oh no! Well, I think it's just a big giant ball of weed. Oops. Viking Anchor Santa Gravel Take 2. So I cleaned off all the weed and, and gave it another try. Uh, just a repeat of that, that same test. It said initially just fine, but it, it did the exact same thing again. On the reset, it, it, it drug a little bit, started collecting weeds, and it was the same story. So that's all I've got for this Viking test. I think there's a clear advantage with the Viking in terms of mud fouling. Also, it, it generates higher holding power in, in my mud substrate. However, I believe the much higher tip weight of the Mantis anchor might just be an advantage in certain situations. Maybe a faster setting Viking would dig in and stop moving before getting tangled with weeds. All right, I hope you found that uh, test of the Viking anchor interesting, but uh, let, let's talk a bit about my future of anchor testing. As you can see, I'm aboard Panope, and it's still in my workshop. I, I do intend to launch the boat soon for a, kind of a late summer season, and um, I've, been, I've been collecting quite a few new anchors for testing, and I'll get to those. Um, just a preview here, we've got a, we got a 45 pound CQR to test, a 21, 21 pound galvanized spade, a 55 pound Rockna Vulcan anchor, that should be exciting, and then perhaps, perhaps the most anticipated, I've got a 45 pound uh, ultra anchor, stainless steel ultra anchor in new condition, so that's all pretty exciting. Oh, I forgot, I've got a five gallon bucket full of dinghy anchors that I've been collecting, so I'll do sort of a dinghy anchor shootout. So, I will do these anchors no matter what, but I'd like to talk a bit about the funding of all this, and that is to say that there is no funding. I've been doing all this out of my own pocket. I'm not sponsored by any anchor maker. I don't uh, submit articles to magazines and get paid uh, for any of this, with the exception that I did monetize my YouTube account. You may notice that there's ads in some of my videos, and uh, well, if they get watched, I get paid. Uh, lately, I'm up to a lofty $50 a month. That's how much I've been making off YouTube. And, ah, that's good. It buys me some lunches. Um, but it's certainly not covering the costs and certainly not covering the time involved for me to, to do all this anchor testing. However, I would like to ask you to start chipping in a little bit. You don't have to. I'm going to keep these videos available for free. But for those that are inclined, I'm going to set up a Patreon account. You can, you can then sign up and pledge to donate a certain amount, maybe it's $2, maybe it's $5, whatever you want, and when I post a video, I get a little money kicked toward me. Um, it's not my intent to quit my day job. I, am a, I work at a co company that builds sailboats, and um, I enjoy that work, and I, I don't anticipate anchor testing as being a, a means for my livelihood. However, if 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 you guys chip in a lot and then I really start making real dough, I'm proposing that I could test anchors a lot more. There's certainly many areas of anchor testing that I haven't explored. Um, I've really only tested in two or three seabeds, so I could explore all kinds of different locations. Um, I could use different road combinations. There's, there's just almost an endless amount of anchor testing that can be done. Uh, so if if I end up making a reasonable amount of money for this, expect a steady stream of new anchor tests. If not, that's fine too. I'll continue to test anchors at my leisure when it's when it works out for me. Um, I, I'm still kind of passionate about it as a hobby, but I'm certainly no longer 
willing to spend money and buy anchors and you know direct outlays are are going to be tougher for me so so consider chipping in and if you do i promise to continue to test these anchors in as fair and unbiased manner possible thanks